Chapter 14 The Arrival of the Norsemen The Viking Invasion Charlemagne, the king of the Franks, ruled an empire that stretched all through Europe. His people called him the Roman Emperor because, they said, Charlemagne's kingdom is like the old Roman Empire rebuilt. We can live in peace and prosperity, just like the Romans of old. But do you remember what happened to the old Roman Empire? Barbarians attacked it, and soon the Empire of the Franks had its own barbarians to fight off. Fierce warriors arrived by ship from the north. They attacked cities along the coast, and even sailed down the Rhine and the Seine rivers into the middle of Frankish land. These invading warriors were called Northmen, or Norsemen. Look on your map, up above the kingdom of the Franks, and you'll see the North Sea, a cold, gray sea, often covered with clouds of mist. A peninsula reaches down into the North Sea. Remember, a peninsula is a piece of land surrounded by water on three sides. This peninsula is called Scandinavia. The Norsemen came from the kingdoms of Norway, Denmark, and Sweden in Scandinavia. Most Norsemen didn't fight for a living. They were farmers who could no longer find good land to farm in Scandinavia. So they built ships and set out to find new homes. In the language of the Norsemen, a man who went adventuring by sea was said to have gone Viking. So sometimes these Norsemen were also called Vikings. The Viking ships were long and narrow, with fearsome dragon's heads on their fronts to frighten enemies. The ships were built with unusual flat bottoms. Boat builders in other countries made boats with round bottoms that jutted down beneath the water. With a round-bottomed boat, you could only sail in deep water. Otherwise, the bottom of your boat would scrape against the bottom of the sea. But the flat-bottomed Viking boats floated right on the water's surface. They could sail right into shallow water and right up onto the sand of a beach. Imagine that you've come down to the banks of the Rhine River with your water buckets. It's a cool, foggy morning. Your farm is right up the road, and you have cows waiting to be milked and grain waiting to be hoed. But first you need to haul water up from the river. The Rhine is shallow here, so you wade out knee-deep and bend down to scoop water into your buckets. Little waves splash gently around you as you pull your buckets through the calm, clear surface. But another sound is mingling with the splash of the waves. Could it be the muffled sound of oars? You strain your eyes to see into the mist. Long, dark shapes are moving indistinctly in the fog. Suddenly, a carved dragon's head springs out of the mist. It is the front of a Viking longship. The ship is propelled forward right under the sand of the beach. You spring aside as Viking warriors pour over its edges, waving battle axes and double-edged swords. Three more longships loom into view through the mist. You've been invaded by Vikings. While Charlemagne was king, the Vikings only invaded the kingdom of the Franks occasionally. Charlemagne wasn't afraid of the Vikings. He called them worthless scamps, and his army was so well organized that the Vikings couldn't conquer it. But after Charlemagne died, his empire was divided between his three grandsons. Now the Franks no longer had a strong, united army, and the Vikings were ready to invade. They sailed into France again and again with their flat-bottomed boats. They burned cities and stole treasure. They raided the western part of France so often that the king of the western Franks finally gave them a piece of it for their very own. Now the Vikings had a new homeland. The Franks called it Northmen's Land. Soon it became known as Normandy. Do you remember what happened to the barbarians who settled down in Rome? They became more and more like Romans. The same thing happened to the Vikings. After they settled down in Normandy, they learned to speak and dress like the French. 
Many of them converted to Christianity, and they no longer went e-Viking. The Vikings had become Normans.